Good day, everyone. Uh, today's subject is going to deal with the common problems that I have encountered and experienced and some of the solutions that I have uh, utilized to solve these particular problems. I hope this will provide you with some useful, practical information uh, for you to be able to either suspect or encounter these problems and consider some of these solutions. So I'll be talking about the three main areas today in the cooling tower system. The first area we'll be talking about is the cooling tower itself. We'll be discussing, of course, uh, what it is, where it's at, what the materials of construction are, uh, some of the internal components that we'll be reviewing. Uh, then, of course, we'll be talking about the heat transfer equipment itself, the heat exchangers, plate and frame heat exchangers, uh, all types of heat exchange equipment, uh, which is critical, of course, to the cooling tower system. We'll be talking about uh, uh, how to start those up properly to maintain good protection throughout the entire life expectancy of that equipment, particularly in initial startups. So it's very important aspects. Then, of course, the third area we'll be dealing with is the what ties everything together, and that, of course, is the circulating water lines of the cooling water system. Uh, it's important to consider what they are in way of metallurgy, uh, what initial protection can occur, uh, to even consider the presence of stagnant water conditions or dead legs. So consequently, those are areas that we'll be dealing with uh, on a regular basis. The uh, first area, of course, was starting with cooling towers. Uh, one of the most common areas for a new galvanized steel cooling tower. One of the problems that occurs is white rust. This is, of course, corrosion of galvanized steel. Why we call it white rust is because it, it's white in color as contrasted to the red rust of uh, filed steel. Uh, the proper method of being able to uh, uh, resolve this white rust problem on a new cooling tower is to start up that cooling tower properly. Uh, that is from the water treatment standpoint. If, uh, if this new tower, of course, uh, uh, the guidelines from the manufacturer says you can do this in several weeks or several months by controlling the pH down in the range of 6 to 8, and you will gradually form a protective film on that particular uh, uh, galvanized steel surfaces. Uh, there's other techniques that can be utilized as well. Uh, this other technique uh, solution is for for a rapid uh, establishment of the protection on the galvanized steel. Usually, can occur within 12 to 48 hours. Uh, this is done by utilizing a high level of phosphate in the cooling tower water, uh, the range of 100 150 parts per million of phosphate with a good P phosphate scale inhibitor, so you don't get deposits. Uh, can maintain your pH about seven, seven and a half, and then once that has been established, you try to maintain at least three to five ppm of phosphate in the standard continuing cooling tar water treatment program. Uh, there is another technique, of course, that can be utilized, and that is using a different chemical, such as uh, polysilicates. Again, we can use a high level initially of the polysilicate, again controlling the pH a little bit higher because silicates, of course, uh, uh, like are much more soluble at higher pHs and Therefore, we don't really have to have any good scale inhibitors for silicates in doing this particular uh, method of uh, establishing the, the protection on the galvanized steel. And then, of course, we'd like to maintain about 20 to 30 ppm of silicate in the treatment program thereafter. Sometimes people will use phosphate to continue to maintain that program uh, of the polysilicates, and that can be done as well. So that's a technique that has to be utilized. Here's an example of a couple cooling towers, both galvanized towers. One, of course, is the counter flow on the right, uh, and the other one, I mean, the cross flow on the right, I'm sorry, and the one on the left, the little one, is a, is a counter flow cooling tower. I identified this because it was an excellent picture to say just above that, uh, the cooling tower, the large cooling tower, is big vents that are exhausting from that particular facility. And that could be taking contaminants right into the cooling tower intakes. Uh, there's another vent that's located on the, on the roof. Uh, which is uh, between the cooling towers, uh, those may be spewing out various type of, of contaminants, such as exhaust from toilets, exhaust from, from um, uh, uh, 
food, food processing operations, the cafeterias, this type of thing. And those are areas that could be causing serious problems that will enhance or cause substantial amount of galvanized corrosion uh, in those particular cooling towers. So you have to watch that as well as the bile buildup and what have you. One last area is, of course, they have air coolers at the very bottom there. And you would wonder, with their exhausting of their coolers, some of that warm air might be just drawn right into the cooling towers, which would reduce the efficiency of cooling system. The key here is to say, where's your cooling tower? What possible contaminants could be getting into that particular cooling tower? Will it contribute to white rust or will it not?